And here we have an orange rocker verb 50, Mark 3. Uh, you can guess what the owner's complaint is. I believe I was just saying something about these pot metal split chef knurled uh, uh, pots and how flimsy they are. Notice that in both cases on the orange, the OR100, the, one, the pot that's bad is the one that was missing its knob. Um, these things can be hit, and if uh, the knob's not there and you hit the shaft, it can uh, damage the pot internally. And of course, it can just shear off because it's really crappy, uh, crappy material there. Anyway, um, just because I, I don't know that that's the only problem the amp has, I'm going to see if uh, how the whole thing sounds, make sure before I send it back, it's all healthy. And I'm gonna see if I can make this pot turn at all just by pressing against it and turning and using some willpower. Because I'd like to hear the channel doesn't seem to be the case. So whatever volume that's at is the volume that's at. Anyway, let's open it up. All right, well, I did a quick visual inspection and nothing seems to be wrong. Uh, nothing is visibly wrong. Um, check the fuses. Uh, both are the correct values. Uh, the fuse holders are all tight. All the fuses on the board are tight. Um, someone at the factory, I think after it comes out of the wave soldering process, went back and did an inspection and any uh, joints that didn't quite have enough solder re retouched and so throughout the amp there are little bits of solder from the top that, that stand out. It's not important enough to, to show you, but some care went into this. I'm not a huge fan of the Samwa caps in these. Marshall uses them as well. They last for a while. They're not great. Nishikan, Rubicon, United Chemcon, all the cons are better, and it's really not a huge price saving, but they, they, they save it. Um, good quality boards and oranges. Aside from the pots, they usually haven't much of a problem, but um, the problem with the snap is not just this volume pot, which is snapped off. There is no sound when you plug into it. So the first thing to do to troubleshoot that is I'm going to plug into the effects return and see if we have sound. We don't, and we are not in standby. So, bad preamp tube. Let's find out and move the camera out of the way. So embarrassingly, I did about the next 10 to 15 minutes of this process not knowing that my microphone had come disconnected. And so I had all the video, but I had no audio. Uh, so I'm recreating this, not a cheat, I'm not gonna pantomime it, but you know, I'll tell you what, what you missed. After I powered it on, I had no signal whatsoever. Uh, no signal coming into the input jack, no signal on either channel, didn't matter about the master volume setting was, no signal coming through the effects return. So my first stop in that situation is to measure voltages. So I started with the EL34s, the output tubes. I had normal uh, seeming plates and screens on both. Went to measure the grids. This one was like negative 34, that's fine. This one was f positive 400 volts. That's a problem. Immediately powered the, the amp off. And uh, at that point, I needed to find out if it was just a bad tube that developed an extreme leak to its grid or whether there was a problem, say this uh, coupling cap here, which is only rated for 400 volts, was leaking voltage from the preceding stage, the phase inverter, throwing that off, or whether there was conductivity in the board or the socket. So I pulled the tubes and I disconnected the output transformer center tap and I measured conductivity from pin to pin to pin to pin. All this stayed infinite, uh, no conductivity. I used my heat gun to heat it all up to simulate having been on for a long time with the tubes being hot, uh, the conductivity did not drift. Uh, so no issue in the socket, no issue in the board. I put in a new pair of EL34s, well, a test pair of EL34s because uh, I wanted to make sure that wasn't a problem in the circuit that was going to cause that to happen again. So I used some old ones that work okay, because if I'm gonna blow out a pair of EL34s, it's not gonna be a new $90 pair. And with the old Sovtex that I have on hand for test purposes, this stayed stable for about 10 minutes, and I'll do further testing after this video. Uh, so it was a problem with the old stock EL34s, not a problem in the amp. That said, there were 400 volts present on this grid, 
And this grid uh, is connected both to this 400 volt rated coupling cup to the phase inverter and connected to the bias supply, which has uh, bias caps rated for 63 or 100 volts. I'm not sure which ones they are over here. You can't see them, I'm pointing to the left. So I need to look at the schematic and find which caps are in the bias supply, though none of them have bulged. I think since I have to pull this board to replace that uh, volume pot on the clean channel anyway, and pulling the board is the main hassle on these, at that point, I'm gonna change out both of these coupling caps in the phase inverter output because this one had 400 volts at, at one side, and I'm gonna change out the two or, or, or however many bias caps because those little electrolytics are 75 cents each. So just in case any damage was done, it may be an abundance of caution, but given that all the expense of doing this is the labor of pulling this board, I only wanna pull the board once if I can. Uh, while I have it open, it'll get a new pot and about three or four dollars worth of uh, new components and uh, nip that in the bud. So at that point, uh, the video will resume. I knew that I had power in the output, I had signal coming out, I could hear it, and that's when I started to test. So back to the stuff I thought I was doing in real time. Fortunately for us, this broke off at a position where it's on. <laughs> These things do have a nice clean sound. It's it's unusual if you're used to Fenders or Marshalls. It's a different sound, and there's no mid adjustment. They're very interactive, but uh, that's beyond the scope of this video. So I know as far as that channel goes, we just need that uh, replacement pot, which we knew about. And of course, we're gonna need a pair of EL34s. And I didn't show you, but one of the bear traps on here, uh, the thin metal broke off. So two bear traps, they're like a dollar each. No big deal there for some good quality ones. So let's take it to the other channel. Hmm. All right, I'm thinking we may have a bad tube on that channel. We flip this over and play tube whack-a-mole. See if we can get that channel to come back. All right, sometimes it's faster to just do things like this. Listen to the hum. Still have hum. I'm gone, let's change out that tube. Sometimes it's faster to do stuff like this than to look up the schematic. I have the schematic, it's on all my computers, I have it on my own server, under all my schematic documents. But uh, I know when it's most likely just to be a bad triode, it's faster to change out triodes. So. so that's what that was, and yeah, Bad PM ECC 83. Had quite a few bad and noisy PM series amp uh, tubes in oranges lately. Let's change out that microphonic one as well. And I will recommend to the owner that we get at least two new preamp tubes, if not a full set. Let's see what I have handy. Here's one that just says Bugera. It's a cheap generic tube, but then again, so is the PM. Let that warm up a little bit. Much better as far as microphonics go. We can do even better than that. So I'm going to put this video up and let the owner see it. Definitely needs a pair of EL 34s. Needs a uh, bear trap to replace this one here, which is broken. And since they're cheap and easy to swap out, I'll change them both out for a higher quality one. It needs, has to have one 12AX7. It would be good for this one to be changed out as well. And if it were mine and I could afford to, I would change out all six preamp tubes for higher quality than the PMs. But if you, you know, that's up to the owner, it's just definitely gonna be these two. And this one uh, will be quieter, a new one will be quieter than this Bugera, but this Bugera B 
branded one is uh, much quieter than the PM branded one. And of course, a new volume pot and knob for the clean channel. I've already reached out to the um, Orange Amps distributor in Georgia, and they're sending me prices and availability for the replacement OEM pots. I could get by with a lot of different things for the, the clean channel on this one, but on the OR100 with that dual gang long uh, split shaft, if they have it in stock, it's better to do the OEM. And some new orange knobs. So I think uh, both amps will have happy endings. Hopefully by the time this is uploaded, I'll have had that reply email from Andrew at Orange Amps USA and all will be well.